In this one, we're gonna be talking about input groups with Bootstrap. Now, of course, Bootstrap is that front-end framework that makes our site look better. So it, it just really kind of adds styling to our site and it's all already built and predefined for us. So that allows us to th use things like input groups from Bootstrap to just make our forms look a little bit better. In this case, it's gonna be our input for search as well as our search button. We wanna make those two things in particular look better by using the input group component. Of course, you can go through the actual um, documentation on getbootstrap.com about this input groups inside of components, and you will actually see all of the things here, and you can try these things out on your own too. Um, for us, we are gonna be using the button add-ons component um, of the input groups. That's essentially what we're gonna be doing as it already has inside as an example. So to do this, we are gonna come into our search feature. So inside of our templates, so in source templates, we are gonna be doing, we wanna see our post list because that's where our form is, right? So we have an input here and we also have an input here. So those are technically two inputs. One is technically a button and the other one is the actual text input so we can actually type in there. So these two can actually be inside of what's called an input group. So we can add a div in here and we'll add the class of input-group and make sure you got your spelling right and we're gonna close off this div class. Now we wanna make sure this is still inside of the form. If it's not inside of the form element then we're running into some issues with actually running that search. But now that I've made this div class, let's actually take a look at our button and see if anything's changed. Nothing's really changed other than you notice the search button came in a little bit but we actually wanna add in some new classes to our inputs to actually make them work with the input group specifically. So for our text one, we just add form-control and you can use form-control as far as an input class outside of the input group and it would still work in the way it's about to. So we'll show you that in a second. And then the button itself, we're gonna add a class of btn and btn-default and we're gonna see what this result is. We jump back in and what we see here is two lines. One, we have our input um, form and it's actually going nice. It looks pretty nice for us as far as the input text is concerned and the button's right below it. Um, so the reason the button's right below it is because of how we actually have to do this next part, which is doing a span. So span class equals to input-group-btn and then we wrap that entire BTN in that span. Um, so then we actually have this span group coming through. We refresh in here, and now we have a full button search. So it goes all the way across. Um, so that actually looks pretty good for what we're doing here. Now, of course, if we wanted to change the width of that, we could just add in a new class in here. So I could do div class equals to column small six again, and we'll see what this looks like in just a second but then I can close off that div and let's tab these things in so it just looks a little bit nicer and easier to read what's going on. So we save that and we refresh in here and notice that that is now coming in um, a little bit. So basically what it's doing is it's a sub column of this other column. So um, we have a little bit of spacing issues because of how it's laid out. So I'm gonna add a class to the form and just say row. We save that and refresh and now it's working a little bit better. So it's now halfway through and it's showing all that stuff. Um, so that's pretty cool. And that's how I'm gonna leave it, just this search item right here. And then I'll just search something. So let's say ADS, just like that, there we go. And of course you could have returned one result. You could have something like that in here. But there is one more thing that I wanna do is actually change this search text to being a font awesome icon. So Font Awesome is a really cool way to render some of these icons, which you may have seen from us before. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this one in particular, but we notice that it says in input group. So the value is search, but it's, it's still an input. It's not an actual button. So what we wanna do is change this button to a button itself. So, and the input is now changing to a button and we give it a type of button. And now we just add that new class in there and close off the button. Um, so this right here is actually gonna handle the same stuff. We could add type of submit in here as well, and it should give us that same result. So I'm gonna go ahead and comment out that first one, and we will refresh in our page, and we see that it's not actually rendering that search bar, and that's because we don't have Font Awesome on our site. 
So what I'm gonna do is just the standard Google search that I would do for this anyway is font awesome and then CDN. And then that way it gives me the CDN version. We wanna find the CDN version of the styles and here it is right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. I'll explain that in a little bit more detail in just a second. And then we wanna bring that into our base.html where our other CSS is coming through and I'm gonna put it below those other things and do leak reel equals to style sheet and href equals to that link and then we close off that link reel and now if we refresh and advance in the blog it's now showing us that button uh, notice it's not completely filling up the button as we've seen inside of the components itself so you might want to actually come in here and do font awesome button so fa.2x and we'll see what that does if we refresh in here. Now it's a little bit too big. So unfortunately, the font awesome is not working exactly like what we want. So we'll just add an exclamation mark after it. And now it's it's fitting a little bit better as far as the size is concerned. Um, maybe a space would actually do something. No, it does not. So for now, we're just gonna leave it with the exclamation mark um, because we're not gonna do some inline styling. But basically, you would have to change the style sheets to make sure that that was the right size or of course you could just leave it as search and use that search icon at the end. Uh, the important part here is not so much getting that icon right, it's really just showing you how what you can do with this input group stuff. Um, now, you might be wondering why do we use the CDN version? Now, the reason for using CDN versions at any time, whether it's for Bootstrap or Font Awesome or our jQuery, the real reason for it is that you allow for other people to cache these results into their browser. So once it's cached into their browser, loading your page moves a lot faster. So it's like, it's kind of like all of us using these CDN versions of these libraries. It just makes it better for all of us that use it together. That way your browser is not trying to register it each time it goes to a new site using that. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If it doesn't, definitely look up what a CDN does on Google or let us know in the questions or in the comments below if you have questions on it. Otherwise, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.